again welcome you all to this wonderful event kubernetes community days chennai we are super excited to be here my name is unnati mishra along with akshat khanna we'll be talking about open source and kubernetes for students we are working as an mts intern at vmware and final year student pursuing btech in computer science from srm university chennai these are the important topics that we'll discuss in this session since we cannot cover every topic about open source and kubernetes due to limited time we'll still try our best to cover every important concept here so let's begin first of all what is open source open source is a term that originally referred to open source software open source software is a code that is designed to be publicly accessible that is anyone can see modify and distribute the code as they see it open source software is developed in a decentralized and collaborative way relying on peer review and community production now comes the most exciting part how to get started with open source so these are the few simple steps by which we can get started in contributing to open source first of all we have to choose a programming language of your choice and then we have to search for beginner friendly projects from github to get started first of all suppose i want to contribute in javascript so i have to search for any project that uses javascript then i have to understand the project by looking at the docs there is a contributing guide or you can say read me file in which the list of all the steps to get started with that project is listed there then by reading that you can try to run the project on your local machine or vm then you can find a issue on the github from the issue tab on that project to focus on the good first issue because you are a beginner then you have to focus on the good first issue from the issue tab then suppose you find a bug or you want to make an enhancement in that project so you can make that and by doing that you can you have to fork that repo and then implement that feature or bug you have to fork the repo and then you have to code it in your local machine and then you have to push it to the repo then you have to raise a pull request or pr and then wait for the maintainers maintainers to review the pr and if your request is valid and is accepted by the maintainers they'll merge your pull request and then you have made your first contribution to open source now we look into the open source communities and events these all are the open source communities presents worldwide where you can connect contribute and learn a lot about open source projects these are the communities that are super active and their events are conducted every year on a specific time suppose there is digital ocean they conduct hacktober fest every year in the month of october where you can contribute to open source there is google summer of code in which many startups are there in which you can contribute there is major league hacking they conduct a lot of hackathons every now and then there is outreach girls grip summer of code linux kernel mentorship program so these are some open source communities and events by which you can get started and contribute to open source and meet a lot of people who are contributing in open source communities now that you have learned about open source communities and events we'll see how to get involved in kubernetes community and sig so what is sig sig stands for special interest groups it is a group of contributors who maintain and publish the kubernetes components and the website getting involved with sig is a great way of con contributing in the kubernetes to have a large impact on kubernetes projects so head over to this website kubernetes.io/community to learn more about kubernetes community now we'll see the contributor guide first we'll see the prerequisites you have to create a github account and then sign the cla signing the cla is a automated step done by the github bot to every new contributor then you have to read the code of conduct because there are many important terms mentioned there then you have to set up your developer environment to start contributing now your first contribution you have to find something to work on related to your interest suppose in kubernetes i want to contribute in container d or cni plugins then you can go to that repo and then you can start looking in the good first issue label the good first issue can be like enhancement in the documents or any small feature that you want to implement so you have to look for good first issue label 
as shown in the picture there are good first issue label put in many of the issues so by clicking in any issue you can assign that to yourself going to that issue and then in the comments section you can type slash assign so the github bot will assign that issue to you so that you can start working on it then you can contribute to special interest group that is sig under sig there are many projects that is sig apps cli multi cluster storage and windows and there are many sub projects under that so you can contribute here also so this was all about kubernetes and how to get involved in kubernetes community and sig now akshal will take you forward to know what is kubernetes and what are kubernetes components hello everyone this is akshat i hope you are enjoying the session today so after learning about open source now it's time to get into kubernetes so kubernetes is a platform and a container orchestration tool which is used for automating deployment scaling and the operation of your uh, application containers and uh, it is also portable extensible and is open source and have a uh, community of great contributors contributors around the world so it has a rapid growing ecosystem and kubernetes services support tools are widely available these days so kubernetes is a container orchestration tool as i told so we can uh, automate deployment scaling and the operation of the application on in the cluster and it was open sourced by google in 2014 before that it was internally used by google for many years and it supports various platform like vsphere azure uh, google cloud and aws etc and now next thing comes is what is a pod and a node so pod is the smallest or the most basic deployable object in a kubernetes cluster a pod represent a single instance of a running process in a cluster pod can have one or multiple containers but in uh, regular cases it is only one docker container then comes the node so node is a worker machine in kubernetes that may be a virtual or a physical machine depending on your cluster each node is managed by the control plane a node can have multiple pods and the kubernetes control plane automatically handles the scheduling and auto healing and these cases uh, of the pods across the cluster so here comes the uh, diagram this diagram speaks thousand words in this first we have a node this is a worker node inside the worker node we have two components kubelet and kubeproxy so these this is a diagram which is these are the basic components in a kubernetes cluster so uh, as i told in the worker node we have kubelet and kubeproxy and also the container d which is the uh, default runtime of the kubernetes that is running inside a node worker node so here in this diagram we have three worker nodes having their respective kubelet and kubeproxy and all the requests are uh, handled uh, in in a control plane uh, that is depicted here all the requests that are uh, coming from the uh, nodes are, are received by api server so this uh, here is the api server which receives all the requests and uh, controls and sends back the request to the nodes so we have the api server which interacts with all of the nodes in the kubernetes cluster then we have a scheduler so scheduler is used for uh, scheduling of the nodes and uh, keeping a track of the nodes that are running and also we have etcd that is a, a key value pair store which stores the uh, current state of the kubernetes cluster or the nodes that are running so uh, in etcd it is a key value store where we usually store the state of the cluster and then we have a controller manager which controls all the uh things inside the kubernetes cluster we also have a con uh, cloud controller manager which receives the request from the uh, cloud provider api through cloud provider apis and it controls the uh, kubernetes cluster so we have two uh, components first is the control pen and the worker nodes now it's time for a quick demo so let's get started as we learnt about kubernetes and kubernetes concepts along with the kubernetes components how these components interact with each other so now it's time to get our hands dirty with kubernetes cluster so i'll walk you through a step by step guide how you can create your own kubernetes cluster on your local machine and 
also deploy a simple application in that cluster. So like uh, setting up local Kubernetes cluster is incredibly simple these days. All thanks to tools like Minikube, Kind Cluster, and even Docker provides Kubernetes nowadays. So, but in this tutorial, we'll be following Kind because like it is the fastest and with minimal dependencies, we can set up Kubernetes cluster on a local system. We don't require any kind of clouds like GCP, Azure, AWS. We just need an operating system and we can uh, have our Kubernetes cluster up and running in our local machine. So uh, before moving forward, we need to have some uh, install or prerequisites that should be installed on our system. So let's go ahead and see that. So uh, at initially you need a Docker desktop. So you can go ahead and download a Docker desktop from their official website. So if you are using a Darwin based operating system, then you can uh, download Docker desktop for Mac and similarly followed by uh, Docker desktop for Windows or and if you are a Linux uh, user, then go ahead and download Docker for Linux. So you can download the Docker from their official website. And the next tool that we require is kubectl. So this is the command line tool that we use to uh, send commands to our Kubernetes cluster and uh, run com uh, commands on our Kubernetes cluster. So you can uh, simply search install kubectl on Google and then you can follow the steps that are shown in this documentation of Kubernetes. So again, uh, based on your op operating system, you can go ahead and download these and install kubectl command line on your uh, system. And the third dependency or like prerequisite that we need to have is the kind. So uh, in all these three, if you are using Mac, you can di directly go ahead and uh, install these three of them using brew. You can uh, simply write brew install Docker, brew install uh, kubectl, and also like brew install kind simply. And if you are a Windows user, you can uh, install kind using chocolatey package manager. Just write choco install kind. So these are the these are three prerequisites that we require before uh, starting with. Uh, uh, creating our own cluster Kubernetes cluster in our local system. So it, please ensure that uh, Docker desktop is running in your system. So let's check that out. Docker stop. To check that Docker is running or not, we need to run the command docker ps and we get a empty uh, list that means no Docker container is currently running. So we, once all these components are installed, we are ready for uh, local deployment of local Kubernetes cluster. So ensure we have also ensured that uh, uh, Docker is running in our system. After this, we need a simple configuration file that is kind.config.yml file. So this is a configuration file in which we'll specify few of the small things to create our Kubernetes cluster. So this is the configuration file here. In this, we are specifying the kind as cluster. So this is a cluster configuration and the API version that we have to follow. So it is like kind.kh.io slash v1 alpha 4. So this is the version of the kind cluster that we are following. And inside the nodes, we have to specify the role as control plane and these are few of the extra port mappings that we have done. So we are using container port uh, 30080 and the host port as 80. So this is a port. So this is optional. Uh, I have provided the listening uh, listen address. You can also provide this or this is an optional step. So uh, you can omit this by default. It will take 0.0.0.0, .0 and the protocol that we are following is TCP. So you can save this file, uh, your configuration file as kind.config.yml. Then to start your kind cluster, you have to run the command kind create cluster uh, then followed by a name. Uh, the name will be KCD cluster. Then we have to give the configuration. So the flag config followed by the name of the file that is uh, kind.config.yml. I'll hit enter to run this command and we can see that kind is creating a node here preparing nodes and writing the configuration, starting control plane. We can see the status, right? So our, we are getting the output that a cluster is being created. We need to wait for some time. Okay. Now we got the response that your cluster has been created successfully. And after this, we are finally, uh, we are finally fired up our cluster, Kubernetes cluster. Now we have a Kubernetes cluster running in our 
system and you can check that by using uh, qctl get all so we can see a default service kubernetes that is running here uh, and this means that we have successfully uh, created our kubernetes cluster now that the cluster is up and running now we can run the process uh, or deploy applications on the kubernetes cluster so uh, we'll be uh, deploying a some simple web server over our uh, kubernetes cluster so kubernetes describe all the workloads through a simple yaml file so yaml uh, called a manifest so in that manifest or the yaml file we have all the configuration to run a, a deployment in a kubernetes cluster so uh, yeah so we'll cre uh, quickly create that file so that file is known as application underscore deploy.yml and here's the file so in this we have uh, defined the api version as app slash v1 uh, according to the version of our app that we are deploying and the kind is the deployment and we can also give the name so the name will be kcd app and in the spec we have to uh, specify a few things like replicas how many replicas do we want like it can be one two as many as you want and also the uh, selectors like we have provided the match label here and also we can provide a template all the metadata and all those things so and the important part here is the spec so here we have to define the container that we want to deploy so we are deploying a nginx image inside our kubernetes cluster so we need we can save this configuration and now let's go to our terminal back and we'll write qctl apply dash f application deploy.yml okay so our deployment is created it gives me the output that the deployment is created so this deploy this is a nginx docker container that is running the process on the cluster and we can confirm it by running kubectl get pods so this is the pod that is running so this is our kcd app and our container so we, we can check the status though okay though it is still not ready and we can see the status that container creating let's run kubectl get pods again and check yeah now you can check the status uh, it is ready now and the status is running so what actually happened so when you create a deployment in kubernetes there you and you also specify number of replicas that we saw in the configuration file yeah so this is the number of replicas that we want to create and uh, you want to set uh, you have already we have already set the manifest file which is this one so each repli replica copies the container uh, that are in the spec so we have already defined the container as nginx and this running instance is called a pod okay a pod is can have uh, one or more containers running uh, in a logical group and also once we init the containers so it runs a process on each pod so in this instance if we are running a engine nginx of our own inside the kubernetes cluster so one is enough so we don't uh, need more of them so you can write kubectl uh, kubectl logs and you can paste this name here to check the logs so here we got the logs uh, from our node so these are few of the logs the process is running now so the next question comes to our mind is how a user can visit the page how we can see the deployment of the ser server that is running so kubernetes offer a po powerful service which will route your connections to the containers which are running your server uh, so to do that we have to uh, make a service in that we can directly uh, pass the request to the pods uh, in where the uh, inside the container where it is running so to do that we have to make some changes in the configuration file so this is called exposing expose the service so the service will be exposed and that can be accessible through a port in the local system so we need to make some changes here so we will specify ports container port as 80 and the name as nginx so let's save it and run it again kubectl apply f and followed by the file name so the deployment is configured let's check the pods kubectl get pods 
and we can see the pod is running. Uh, once we have done this, we can see uh, the pod is running and it is updated. Now we can you can see the age here. So this means that the deployment is updated here with the new configuration. Once we have made the changes in the configuration of our app, now we have to create a service through which our uh, it, which will be running in the Kubernetes cluster through which we can expose our port and a user can interact with the application of the web server. So for doing that, we have to create a service. In order to create a service, we have to create a again a configuration file that is application service.yml file. So uh, this is the service.yml file in which we have given the ABI version as v1 and the kind is the service. So here we have given service. The name that can be KCD service because our app is KCD app. So we have given the name convention, followed the name convention as KCD service. And then in the spec, we have to give node port and also specify a few of the protocols here like uh, app here should be KCD app. Yeah, so the app should be KCD app and also uh, we have to give here also it should be kcd app and this is fine i guess yeah so this is fine and here we have given the selector as kcd app and the protocol protocol that should be followed is tcp and the target port is 8080 because we have already exposed exposed that in the app uh, configuration file and also the uh, port or the docker port that is uh, running which is this one we can save this configuration file uh, and let's apply this again so kubectl apply dash f and the application deployment.yml sorry not deploy it's service.yml and when i run this the kcd service is created so we can check that by uh, running kubectl get services yeah, so this is this is the KCD service that we have created now, which is of the type node port, and this is the default Kubernetes uh, service that is running. So this is the KCD service that we have created just now. Now let's check uh, in our browser. We'll go to the browser and check localhost. And we can see welcome to Nginx. So our Nginx server is running. Uh, now we add the localhost we can see that we have a nginx deployment up and running but now what now we want a custom page of our own design right uh, so for doing that these we are creating a resource so these resources are useful for passing config file to process in inside, running inside the pod so for our instance like we have to transfer a index.html file uh, inside our nginx so uh, in nginx the uh, static files uh, uh, are inside slash user slash share slash nginx slash html so all the html files uh, are there so let's check that so here we have an index.html file and this is our sample html5 uh, file that we'll be displaying there in our web server so now i'll be running kubectl uh, create config map index.html dash dash from file index.html and we can see the config map is created here we got the response now let's check that q ctl get config maps i got my html file listed here so index.html now, once we have created the config map, after creating the config map, we have to make some changes in the application underscore deploy.yml here. So in the previous step, we wrote till here, we have specified the containers. So after specifying the containers, we have to write volume mounts. In volume mounts, we have to give the name as, uh, we can give the name like I have given here HTML content and the mount path. So this mount path is the path inside our pod or the container where exactly our static files will be. So that is, this is the path for which Nginx uses to uh, read file from. So the read only is true. And we also have to provide the volume. So, so the volume, uh, we can give the name as HTML content and the config map that we 
created in the previous step so config map we have provided here is index.html we can save this configuration go back to our uh, terminal and i'll run the command kubectl apply dash f and followed by the configuration file let's wait for some time and we saw the output is as deployment is configured now let's check check uh, kubectl get pods and we can see the status running and 13 seconds that this means that our uh, application is uh, updated now go let's go back here and run the localhost so now we got our uh, awesome output that on our page this is a beautiful looking html page kubernetes community is chennai thank you uh, i hope you learned something new today so thank you for attending the session. Thank you. Bye-bye.